I'm sorry everyone. Um, yeah, it went off like another few minutes after that. And I know everyone hates how long my videos are because... Oh, it's gone very blue. I would hate how long my videos are if it wasn't me. So, um, better finish off the story. Um, Bing comes on and they're still sitting there, standing there, rather. Um, and the beach balls come around and um, they grab the beach balls and hold them and keep them instead of throwing them into the crowd like you're supposed to. Uh, my sister gets a beach ball and she wants to do the same thing but the fattest one just does that and knocks her to her hand. Um, they complained they, they complain we weren't even touching them, you know? That's like a fucking... If you're at a concert, especially a concert for someone as big as Pink, you know? You have to expect someone to touch you, but no, if someone touches them, it's Why the hell are you using my leg like an armrest? Get the fuck away from me, seriously, give me some of my personal space. And it's like... Oh... God... I mean, some things, yeah, fair enough. If someone's smoking, you know, which there was, then shelter them if they blow the smoke in your face. Um, if someone is using aerosols on themselves, which she probably would because it's a concert, it's crowded, it's warm, it's sweaty, it's 25 degrees at least, then yes, shelter them if they spray it in your face. But no, every single thing we did, these people complained about. I, w I didn't really realize it then. But yeah, I walked my dog. Um, Better stuff than that. Um, I just, I wouldn't have done this otherwise, but I just realised. And also, I'm one video short from where I should be, which is still a few videos ahead of everybody else. And, yeah, I saw something. I walked my dog, and I saw it just came to me. It's like, I was just going through like stories in my head. I always do, because I'm trying to think of stories I can write, and I'm always writing one, like the one I told you I was writing a few weeks ago. Um, I lost all but one chapter of it, and... Um, I also lost it as a screenplay, which is a few scenes ahead, so trying to fix that. Um, if I can get my, if I can figure out a way to get my still harder repaired, then maybe I could get it fixed. You know, maybe the technicians in my uni will do it for free, who knows, but that probably will be in September. But I was thinking about um, heat crimes. Um, someone said that heat crimes are on the rise, and I just finished this book, Hero, and I've read it before, and it's... It's probably my favourite LGBT book. It's not, it's not the best written LGBT book I've, I've read. You know that probably goes to Intensity of Souls, which again is probably it's right up there. Lost Souls is also amazing, but it's just those ones are a bit. Especially as Lost Souls. Lost Souls is in the very Poppy Zed Bright writes in a very sort of nihilistic way, nihilistic. Even one of the characters is called nothing, just like bring out the nihilism. And um, yeah, Christopher Rice is good, but again, it's sort of in that field, you know, that sort of, um, not so much Chuck Benali yet, but you know, some elements, especially the popular bright, I guess, but it's more the whole Donna Tart. Um, J.D. Salinger sort of field, you know, it's very, it's not necessarily depressing, I guess, some, some element, depending on how you look at it, it can be depressing or not, but, yeah, it's kind of depressing to me, but with Hero, it's optimistic, and it's a happy book, but it doesn't go into wrist slittingly depressingly happy, you know, it's not like Boy Meets Boy, where you just want to it's like if you could like go into this book and live there you would if you were me just because everyone's so nice there people aren't nice in real life you know um i've been told i scare people i've been told that uh i've been hated by people who've barely know me i've been um some guy um threatened to beat me up for buying my friend a drink when he knew i was gay and he wasn't even talking to her or anything um yeah uh, I don't think I'm the most likable person. I'm nice. I really, really, really do think I'm nice. But I 
don't think I'm particularly likable, you know. And even even there's probably people out there, there's definitely people out there that are a lot nicer than me, you know. I, I, I have my moments where I'm evil, but I'm going really off topic here. So I'm thinking of like ideas for books, and a few of them come to me. So one, uh, I want to do something with superheroes, but you know, I'm sort of afraid that Paramore already has a monopoly in that with gay superheroes. So it depends on how you write it. I guess there's another one I had, and it's sort of like an underground society, um, where there's like historical for characters and fictional characters, and um, there's vampires, werewolves, stuff like that, shapeshifters, which is just like a sort of whole underground thing, and they all live in the catacombs of Paris or Japan. I can't decide, but Japan doesn't seem like it, especially Tokyo, because I want it to be like really metropolitan on top and really, really not metropolitan and nice, you know. And Paris has all the scenery around it. I've been to Paris, it's gorgeous, but it has like loads of, you know, I, I don't know. It would probably be easier to read about Paris because I haven't, I've been there. But I was thinking while I was going through these ideas about hate crimes. Oh yeah, that's where I was. And um, there's loads of hate crimes in Hero. And I was thinking, like, what, what seems to me is that it's seen as sort of a defense, you know, like, if I was attacked in the street now, if I was attacked right now, if I went outside, then there'd be loads of people saying, oh, it's because he's gay, it's because he's gay. And I said, no, it's not because I'm gay, it's because people don't like me, you know? I've never had a problem before with people ostracizing me because I'm gay or whatever, you know? I have had more stuff for that, for being atheist than I have for being gay. But, yeah, that general thing, I do think that a lot of the time, not necessarily with everyone, but I think a lot of the time, if someone is attacked for being LGBT, it immediately becomes because they're LGBT. You know, it's like if someone murdered, if someone assassinated President Obama right now, which people have tried to do on the basis of race, but you know, you can't. But he's one of the most powerful people in the world. You know, he's a Democrat. There's plenty of reasons someone would want to assassinate him besides the fact that he's black, you know, but as soon as someone did, it would immediately become because he's black, and I think that we need to stop making such a big deal about it. I mean, obviously, things like gay pride, you know, I'm going to go to gay pride as long as I'm not away that weekend, which I hope I'm not, because I've always wanted to go, and I've never gone before, and I've got gay friends to go with now. Well, I, I had gay friends before, but I have loads more now. Um, meet new people. Um, punch someone in the face if I get drunk enough and I know who that's going to be but yeah if someone attack if someone like blew up gay pride I'd be like fair enough you know someone's blown up gay pride it's because they're gay but if someone just if it's an isolated incident you can't discount the fact that maybe being gay does not define who you are it doesn't define me you know it's a part of who I am fair enough but you know there's also the part of me with brown hair it's a part of me that's white. There's a part of me with tattoos and piercings and glasses and there's a part of me who wears tight clothes and goes to metros on a Wednesday night instead of going to Oceana and drinks a lot and smokes occasionally and does other things, you know, just because something's a part of someone, even no matter how big a part it is. I think that people need to stop making such a big deal. Stop making it like if it's like, stop it. People ostracize themselves a lot of the time, that's what I feel. Like, um... I can't really describe it or define it or whatever, but a lot of the time I do feel that people do ostracize themselves. You know, they, like, they only hang, if someone's gay, sometimes they only hang out with gay people, or, you know, there's Jewish communities within a larger community. And, you know, things like that, I do think, do contribute because people see them as different because they're ostracizing themselves and having their own mini society you know fair enough if you want to and do it but don't go out of your way to be different you know just be yourself because if you go to if you if, if you're a member of one community you risk being ostracized from all the others and that's not good and that's where he comes from and I think I've already done my thingies um yeah um wait Peace be with you, or whatever that is. I don't watch Star Trek, but oh well, bye.